Anaphylaxis is a, is a severe, life-threatening allergic reaction, which is often triggered by a known allergen, but sometimes comes unexpectedly. And it can often include what we think of as systemic symptoms, such as low blood pressure or lightheadedness, hives, uh, you may have difficulty breathing or throat swelling, uh, or even nausea and vomiting. The goals of the study were twofold. One was to see what anaphylaxis is caused by, and the other was to see how frequently we have patients with anaphylaxis. The study was done in a population-based setting, so we looked at all of the residents of Olmsted County, Minnesota, to say, in of those folks living in this county, how often does someone experience an anaphylactic episode? We found that uh, the overall incidence, meaning frequency of anaphylaxis, is about 50 individuals per 100,000 population. And so if you had a population of 10,000, that means you could expect five individuals to have a case of anaphylaxis that year. And uh, that, interestingly, is higher than has previously been reported. A piece of the increased incidence is probably not that anaphylaxis is much more frequent than it used to be, but that we were able, through the Rochester Epidemiology Project, to very meticulously identify those cases, which in other studies might not have been identified. So we saw a, a slight but statistically significant uh, trend towards increasing anaphylaxis over time, particularly when we compare the year 1990 to the year 2000, uh, we saw about a 10% increase in uh, cases of anaphylaxis. So the anaphylaxis can be seen in any age group, but it's most commonly seen in children and young adults. And so we saw incidence rates of about 75 per 100,000 in children, uh, particularly those aged 0 to 9. And we see the incidence also quite high in the 10 to 20 year olds. And then it, it peaks and begins to drift off or actually uh, go down um, as individuals age. Uh, we think that this is due to a couple of factors. One factor being that we begin to learn how to avoid the allergens that are affecting us. The other is that uh, as our immune system matures, sometimes we can actually outgrow an allergic reaction or anaphylaxic response. I think they're important in a couple of ways. One is the uh, etiology of anaphylaxis tends to be food sources and insect stings. And so recognizing those, particularly as a parent or family member, as possible uh, allergens if someone's having a first-time reaction. And the other piece is recognizing that, the, that anaphylaxis is a significant public health concern. And certainly parents of children who have had anaphylactic episodes recognize that this changes the life of the whole family substantially and the efforts that they need to go to to try to avoid the allergens. For providers, a couple of things. One is that anaphylaxis is going to be seen more commonly than is often recognized by providers. Second is uh, the importance of administering epinephrine to those suffering from anaphylaxis. Another piece of this research project identified that epinephrine appears to be underutilized in treatment centers when patients present with anaphylaxis. Uh, there's historically been some concerns with the side effects of giving epinephrine. Uh, however, when you look at it as a group, it appears to be highly beneficial to those with anaphylaxis and have an overall very low risk uh, of an adverse outcome. And so we're, we would recommend that a patient who has low blood pressure, difficulty breathing, uh, receive epinephrine immediately from healthcare providers. There is actually uh, a guideline parameter that has been published which recommends that anybody who has suffered anaphylaxis in the past be prescribed a uh, self-injectable epinephrine pen. And there are a couple different companies on the market that manufacture these. They're, they're all fairly easy to use and can be uh, given in a moment's notice in the event of an anaphylactic reaction. So anyone who's had lightheadedness or difficulty breathing uh, or low blood pressure that's felt to be due to an anaphylactic reaction should receive uh, an auto injector for epinephrine. Uh, occasionally it can be a little bit trickier. Sometimes anaphylaxis will manifest as nausea and vomiting or uh, maybe wheezing and maybe mistaken in, a, in that latter example might be mistaken as an asthma attack. Uh, most of the time uh, it is fairly clear. You suddenly are developing hives, maybe airway swelling and difficulty breathing, or becoming very lightheaded. And in those settings, it's usually straightforward. It may occur after exposure to a tree nut 
or a peanut or a bee sting. Uh, and in those settings, it's usually fairly well recognized. Okay. The early recognition and having a plan in place and making sure that those who have suffered from anaphylaxis in the past have access to uh, auto injector for epinephrine uh, and that those around that individual, particularly if they're a child, um, are aware of that and know what to do is key. And then further education is probably necessary for healthcare providers on the importance of epinephrine uh, administration early in the course for any case that appears potentially life-threatening.